I've been working in this company for one month now. So basically, I work in a small office alone. And the other person that works in the room with me, it's basically one of the bosses of the company. And he's rarely in the office with me since he has other stuff to do around the company. The fact that I'm alone doesn't really bother me. I can play my music while I work. I can be more, let's say, free on what I do. I still have to do my work, so I'm still busy. After one week of working in the company, I've started to notice some strange things. Now at this point, I want to point out the fact that I do believe in ghosts. I really do. But I'm not the type of person that if I hear a rumour, I jump to the conclusion that it's a ghost. I investigate it and I try to recreate the sound or give an explanation. You can say that I'm a sceptical believer if you want to. Every now and then, when I look at my monitor and do my work, I can see shadows or something moving in the corner of my eyes. At first, I simply thought that it was some reflection of the light coming through the window of the room, and I simply accepted that explanation. A week later, it was time to go home, and due to the new COVID regulations here, I must clean and sanitise the whole room. I was cleaning my desk that's in front of the door, and I was giving my back to the door. While turning, I saw something standing next to the door, and didn't really mind it since I thought that it was my boss coming in to tell me that I could leave the office and go home. I was going to reply while I was walking towards the trash can to throw away some papers. I noticed that there was actually no one in the room with me. That left me a bit shocked actually, and I thought that it was simply my mind playing a trick on me. You know, pretty much all the day alone in an office without anyone. I guessed that it's something that could happen, so I simply shrugged it off and went home. The next day, when I walked in with my boss, we found our chairs around the office and not near our desks. That was kind of strange, but I thought that maybe the cleaning lady cleaned the floor and moved them. So I simply expressed my thoughts to my boss and he said, the ladies come on Friday. But the day was Wednesday. This actually gave me some chills. Pretty much every day, a pen or pencil rolls down from a table and I simply think that it's normal. Maybe they're a little bit inclined and the pencils and pens tend to fall off alone from the table. But today, something strange happened. I think that this never really happened to me or my boss either, because he was as shocked as I was. A little bit of backstory. The company that I work in, it's a very laid back company. Obviously you have work to do, but it isn't really a serious and 100% focused on your work type of job. The walls are colourful, the people are cheerful, and my boss is super funny. I really like this place because it gives all the creativity that you need to work. Some of you might agree with me that the mood that you were in and the place that you were working in influences your work and the way you work. I joke a lot with my boss since he's pretty young, and we tend to laugh and make jokes even while working when he's in the office with me. We had lunch together with a couple of other people of the company. And me, my boss, and another woman that works there were walking back to our office. The woman wanted to ask something to my boss, so she was coming with us in our office. When he opened the door, a cold breeze blew in our face, and my boss joked about the fact, asking me, did you leave the window open by any chance? We laugh a bit, but when we walked in, my blood actually freezes. There were papers and drawings scattered on the floor of the office, Pens and pencils too, and everything was a total mess. The woman got scared and she decided to walk away. I totally understand her, honestly. The fact is that it was snowing outside, and there was no chance in hell that me or my boss would open that damn window. Me and my boss started to clean up everything, and at a certain point, he received a call. He went out of the office, leaving me alone cleaning it up. While I was picking up some papers from the ground, Something touched my shoulder. The kind of taps that you do to a friend to make him turn. And I turned and saw nothing behind me. This is the most strange and kind of scary thing that has happened to me so far. I'm not scared by this, honestly. If there is a ghost there, it doesn't really look like it's evil or aggressive presence. It doesn't really scare me. When something happens, I usually look around and then get back to work. 
And when I'm working, I'm actually too focused to think about it. It does give me chills every now and then, but I guess it's totally normal. I decided to ask my boss about what was happening in the office, and he told me that he noticed it and was waiting for some questions to come from me. I really like my boss because he's clear and sincere with me and everyone else. He told me that another person quit the job because he was too scared and feeling bad for working there. And I kind of relate to that. People are pretty sensible from that point of view and become scared about it. I honestly don't because I prefer to have a scientific theory behind it and not jump to the conclusion that whatever happened, it's because of a ghost. My boss went on to say that he himself has experienced strange things, strange sounds and things moving, but nothing more than this. Two days rolled by and we came to today. My boss had to leave because his wife is pregnant and she wasn't feeling well. Scared by it, he decided to leave early to help her if something happened. I do understand this, honestly. I'd do the same. So I simply told him that I'd take care of it. I'd close the company once everyone was out and make sure that everything was turned off and stuff. If you're asking, um, why would your boss leave the key to a new dude around? Well, I don't know, too. He was in a hurry, I guess, and tossed the keys at the first person that he found, and that was me. So I simply waited at the end of my shift, went into every office to turn off the lights, and put everything in place. At that moment, I didn't realise the fact that I was alone in the whole establishment, so I went room by room to turn off the lights. I've noticed that there was another person in the establishment and he helped me to clean stuff and turn off everything. Once we finished, we headed out to close the main door in the gate. We then noticed that there was a light still on. I simply told my co-worker not to worry, that I'll think about it and that he could go home. My co-worker left and I went inside to turn off the light and close everything back again. Not gonna lie, it was a bit scary because a cheerful and happy place like that, in the darkness and without anyone going around, really looks scary and not welcoming. So I simply took a deep breath and walked towards the office with the lights on. I opened the door and a cold breeze blows in my face. It was indeed pretty cold in the whole establishment, so I simply think that when I moved the door, some air movement could have created the breeze. So I simply shrugged it off, reached the switch and turned it off. In that moment, I heard footsteps running down the stairs. I peeked with my head to look in the hallway and it was all dark and I couldn't see much. At that moment, I was pretty scared. Who wouldn't after all? My scientific thoughts start to look for an explanation that would make me more comfortable and sort of, I don't know, safe. It's a sort of self-defense that I have, I guess. So I went on to think about something that could explain it, but I wasn't able to find anything. I was stunned in the place, waiting for something to happen. I don't know, honestly, and I didn't do what I was expecting to happen. I was scared, you could say. I decided to gather my courage and make a run for the front door. I simply ran without thinking about anything. I slammed the door behind me, closed it, and closed the gate. Once outside, I took some deep breaths and regained control over my body. Hopped in my car and drove back home. That's all. Now it's pretty obvious that there is something in there and honestly, I'm not scared of it. I guess that if it was an evil presence, he or she would have tried to hurt me in that moment. I think that it's something that is there and doesn't want to harm or do anything. I'm not scared of this presence so far and my boss neither apparently. He's pretty relaxed about it. He's been there for nearly a year and he told me that nothing really bad happened. Just something annoying like papers on the ground or pens rolling off a table. Nothing much. This kind of makes me more relaxed. I've kept a tab open on all these weird stuff happening during the week. And in this week, nothing special really happened except for one simple event that involved me and my co-worker, not my boss this time. 
I was taking a break with another person that I really enjoyed talking to. We talked about random stuff, let's say everyday stuff. How's the work going? Is the family fine? Yesterday I watched this cool film and blah blah blah. Normal talk. We were drinking coffee in front of the vending machine as always, and it was a pretty busy day. I finished my tasks and even the other person did. We were waiting for our boss to give us some instructions on what to do next, and we met at the vending machines. While talking, I noticed with the corner of my eye something moving. I kept talking as I thought that it was a reflection when my co-worker stopped me after a few seconds to ask if I saw something. I nodded obviously and told him that it could easily be a reflection from the window and nothing more than that. Even my co-worker agreed with me and we simply went on talking. My boss simply popped out from a corner and joined us to give us some update on the next work. He picked up a cup of coffee too from the vending machine and when he finished it, he threw it in the bin as usual. Me and my co-worker were walking back when we heard the plastic bin falling on the ground. We turned to see our boss pretty scared by it. All the trash on the floor and the bin upside down. He simply looked at us and said, I swear I didn't throw it that hard. I looked at my co-worker and simply walked away. This is the strangest thing that has happened to me. I'm not going to lie. I'm still scared from what happened the other day when I had to close the company and honestly, I still feel the chills from it. I was scared and there's nothing wrong by saying that. Everyone else would have been, I guess. But I don't want to give up on my sceptical part. I mean, it's pretty obvious that there is something in my office, but this doesn't really mean that most of the strange things that happen aren't associated with science or natural things. I mean, lights can turn on and off alone, but it could actually be some circuit problems or stuff like that. Right? I woke up last night and it was still dark outside. I went to the toilet as I usually do. I wake up two or three times a night. Now to give you some idea, I live in a small third floor apartment, about 380 square feet with my girlfriend. To the left from the entrance door is the bathroom, then a short corridor at the end of which, and to the left there's the kitchen connected with the main room. With the table next to the wall and a bed opposite the table on the other side of the room. When I was walking back to bed, I stood motionless in the kitchen. There was someone sitting at the table. It wasn't my girl. She's way smaller than the person that was on the chair. I was scared shitless. I wanted to run for my gun, which was next to my side of the bed. But I froze in place as soon as I thought about that. Then he spoke to me. Weirdly enough, it made me calm down. He had a smooth voice. Nothing that seemed demonic. He was facing the window, so he had his back turned to me. He said, It's not time yet, but do not lose your faith in me. I wanted to say something, but he shushed me and added, You do not want to wake her up. He pointed at my sleeping girl with his hand. He stood up and thanked me for the water. There was a glass on the table next to where he'd been sitting. He made two steps in the direction of the window, placed something on the edge of the table, looked through the window, and disappeared. Just like that, he was there one second and gone the next. I ran to the window to look for someone outside, but there was nobody. I checked what he left on the table and there were nine millimeter bullets. Then I checked the glass. It was empty, but I stuck my finger inside and it was wet, so there was water in there earlier. After that, I felt extremely sleepy. I couldn't fight the urge to get into the bed, so I did that. When I woke up, the bullets as well as the glass were still on the table. I know I'm not crazy. I haven't told anyone about this yet. I have something that happened when I was in fifth grade. When it was lunchtime, me and my friends went to a specific place that we usually go to whenever it's lunchtime. The place was a grass field a military camp. It has a sort of military trucks and stuff. It was our personal playground, climbing the trucks. 
there's always this inconsistent tapping sound on one of the trucks. It's just a specific truck that's making the tapping sound. At first we were scared, but we eventually got used to it. But my friend, let's call him Mike, saw a beautiful woman with a long white dress. He told everyone what he saw and of course we were curious and we followed him and he indeed was telling the truth. My friend saw the lady, except me, so I was very skeptical. They didn't pay much attention to her since it was daytime and it was rude of them to call her a ghost, but I still didn't see her, so I was looking for her, but found nothing. So after 30 minutes, we haven't really seen her since the first time, but Mike and two other friends left and it was just me and two of my friends. Let's call them Gabriel and CJ. Gabriel, CJ and I were discussing the white lady that they saw. And of course, I was joking around because I didn't actually believe it. But they always tell me that it was a ghost and I got pretty scared. At that time, I remembered the tapping noise. CJ and I searched under the truck for something that triggers the tapping noise, but instead we found the lady's feet on the other side of the truck. She still wore the same white dress. After that, CJ and I got scared, which led to Gabriel getting scared as well. So we ended up going back to school. At home, I told my grandma I saw a ghost in the military camp. I didn't even specify what ghost I saw. I just told her I saw a ghost. That's when she told me that there was a beautiful white lady that was roaming around that camp. Her description matched so much like what we saw. I was so freaked out. She told me that the woman is beautiful at day, but turns ugly at night. She later added that there was a black shirted man that hates daylight and tends to hide in the shadows. The next day at school, we were hesitant to go back. But at lunchtime, I invited Gabriel and CJ to go back there to figure out what was going on. Gabriel was hesitant, but accepted since he never actually saw the lady's feet. CJ, however, declined because he was scared. So after we went to that camp, it's just me and Gabriel. We were trying to find a lady again, but we found nothing. After 20 minutes of searching, I heard that same tapping noise again. It was the truck five feet in front of me. I called Gabriel to come here, but he was far away trying to search for the ghost so he couldn't hear me. So I decided to look under it myself, but I found myself scared as hell. So I went as far enough as possible so that it was basically 15 feet away in front of the truck. The tapping noise still continued, so I looked under the truck. I was very far, so I couldn't really see much, but after I concentrated, I saw a black man, a figure hanging from the truck. He was looking straight at me, and that made me freak out so much. I called Gabriel and told him to leave. Without any explanation, he was so confused but I think he saw how scared I was, so went along anyway. After that, I was never going back there again. To this day, I'm still puzzled about what's going on. I've never really believed ghosts were real, but after that, I'm starting to doubt myself. I just had surgery on Monday, and I'm out of work for the next three weeks. I believe I've always been sensitive since a young age. Before surgery, people would ask if I'm nervous about surgery and I'd honestly tell them that I'm not nervous. I trust my doctors and I'm at peace if something happens and I die. I told them the only thing I was nervous about was becoming a super psychic and not getting any sleep for the rest of my life because I have ghosts visiting me while I'm sleeping. People would laugh and say that's so me and we all went on with our days. Well, as soon as I came home, I felt like there were many spirits in my room. I even saw a shadow person in the corner of my room, which isn't an uncommon occurrence. Knowing that I was just coming out from anesthesia and I was pretty drugged up, I didn't necessarily believe what I was seeing. I especially keep seeing this woman. I can't see her face and she's wearing late 40s, early 50s clothes, just walking in and out of my room. I just associated this with me being drugged up. At night, I'd be visited by the shadow person and not get a lot of sleep. And during the day, it was this woman and I somehow was able to get sleep. Well, I didn't believe this could be real until one afternoon, 
I was by myself for an hour while my caretaker had to go into work and finish up some things. I was napping on my bed and my cat was sleeping on my legs. I heard what sounded like someone opening kitchen cabinet doors, hearing noises of things moving in the living room, and I'm thinking my sister has come back from work. I heard a swishing, shuffling, walking sound down the hallway and saw the woman in the 40s, 50s dress go straight into my sister's room. My cat's head shot up and he just started into the room for the longest time. I saw his ears perk and move when we heard what sounded like her dresser drawers opening and closing. Then my cat relaxed after we stopped hearing anything and I did too. I texted my sister and she had a mild panic attack because she couldn't remember locking the front door after she left. She rushed home to make sure someone wasn't actually in the house. She didn't find anything and we went through possible noise causes. She was nervous because she knew of my abilities but I always reassured her that I could take care of the house and make it a safe place, even for visiting spirits. And I always have. But since I'm recovering and not totally mentally here because of the drugs, I know I'm not as strong and definitely in a weakened state to fight off negative spirits. I get a text message from my boyfriend while he's at work. For some reason, when he has a ghost experience, I'm having something simultaneously. Usually, these are much darker spirit experiences. He told me he was on his forklift and saw above him something in the shape of a human, but didn't give off real human vibes. It was just clinging to the ceiling and then disappeared. Every time that day he saw this thing that was always staring at him threateningly, I always saw or felt the woman nearby me. I'm wondering now if this woman is my protector while I'm going through my surgery in my weakened state. I feel very blessed now to see her and I'm not scared. My cat doesn't seem to be nervous either. I haven't seen the shadow person much since I've seen an increase of her. My sister jokes now when I tell her when I see the woman. If I see her go into the kitchen, my sister says, Oh, she's telling me I need to do the dishes. It's filthy in there. Or yesterday... When I saw my bedroom curtain move like someone walked by it and heard a weird sound, my sister recreated it and stubbed her toe on the stepladder I've been using to get into bed, which made the exact sound I heard. She said, well, I guess even ghosts can stub their toes when they come to check in on you. So one day in 2020, my mother left the house for the day, so I was the only one there. And I was just sitting in my room when I heard a whisper of my name. And it was a very tiny, quiet whisper that was straight in my ear. After that, I started crying and got kind of creeped out. So I went to the bathroom to collect myself and try not to overthink it and just overall calm down. So I walked to the bathroom and I was already on edge. So I ran to the bathroom and then slammed the door behind me once I got in. Right when I looked in the mirror, I heard the whispers again, but this time it started out quiet. And every time I heard my name, the voice got deeper and deeper and deeper into my head like it was right in my ears. After that happened, I was freaking out and called my mother crying. And when I told her, she didn't act worried as if it was okay. I also have another thing that happened when I babysat my youngest brother, and this also happened in 2020, but I also have no idea when. While babysitting my little brother, he came into my room and told me he was hungry. So I went downstairs with him, and when he got to the kitchen, I stood behind him when he was in front of the fridge. I felt breathing on my neck and felt my name. I don't know how to explain how I felt my name, but that's the only way I can explain it. I immediately started crying and told my brother to go upstairs and got a knife and went around the house, checking every room. I feel like it's something. I just don't know what it is yet. First story is from my cousin. Let's call her Amy. One night, she was sleeping over at our grandmother's house and was woken up by something alerting her. 
Apparently, it was a noise from downstairs. Being curious, but also ready to hit any intruder, she headed downstairs and in the living room saw our dead great-grandmother. We haven't ever met her, but we know what she looked like because of photo albums we were shown multiple times growing up. Amy told me about it the next day since I was coming to visit. I lived four hours away at the time. We've been keeping it a secret for a while now. I don't think she got much sleep for the next couple days Amy stayed there. The next story is from my other cousin, let's call him Ben, and it links into the first story. So similar things happened again. He heard a noise from downstairs, and he was younger than Amy when she had it happen, so he wasn't as cautious, but he headed downstairs. When he saw our great-grandmother, he ended up staying awake that night because he was scared. He kept it a secret for a while, but he did end up telling Amy who told me. When he told us what he saw, we pieced that it was our great-grandmother from the description he gave to Amy. I don't think anyone else in the family has experienced this since my grandmother only moved in there a few years before our great-grandmother's death. So all my aunts and uncles already moved out and us kids nearly ever stayed the night. We haven't told anyone either. Our grandmother has since moved from that house as well. Last story is from my sister. Let's call her Kim. That was in my old house. At the time, my mum, sister and I lived in the house. We were about to move again to the house we're currently in. So we're taking pictures of our house so we could sell it. And my sister took up the job of taking pictures of our connected dining room and living room. In the house, the fridge was in the dining room because there wasn't enough room in the kitchen. She finished the pictures for the living room and had only one picture to go for the dining room. The last picture was of the fridge to the left back door in the middle and you could see some of the dining table to the right. She took the photo but didn't check it fully since it was late and really dark outside. The next day my mum was posting the photos but saw something strange. It looked like there were people in the picture but when the picture was taken no one was in the way of the photo and the people were faded like how would you would expect ghosts to be. Anyway there were three people in the picture, a young boy probably around 12, a woman who looked around late 20s to early 30s and a man who looked around late 30s to early 40s. They also were dressed weird like they were dressed to fit in with the Victorian style clothes. The man was standing in front of the fridge. The lady and the boy were outside looking into the house through the back door and they looked sad as if they were locked outside or something. My mum or sister remembers this since it happened a while ago and I don't know if you can take pictures of ghosts but I'm just typing what I've heard. So everything started in December 2021. It was one of my first nights being home alone. I was playing games on my computer when I heard my dog start barking hysterically. So I knew something was up and went to check on her and she was alerting to something down the hallway at the front door. She started growling and then I heard the lock on the front door rocking back and forth. I immediately thought someone was trying to break in and the lock was rattling for about 20 seconds before it stopped. Then a few seconds later, I heard three thumping, creaking footsteps above, above my upstairs. This freaked me out, so I checked every room upstairs and checked the camera outside. And there was nothing. There's a glass storm door on the outside of the front door, so whatever was moving the lock was from inside the house. That was it for a few months, so I kind of forgot about it until my dad started asking me or my mom were walking the round upstairs in the middle of the night. Neither of us were up and my dad said that he kept hearing footsteps and faint talking for four days before it stopped. And a few nights ago, I was up at around 2am when my parents were asleep and could have sworn I saw someone about eight foot tall standing in the pitch black living room. We've also noticed over the past few months that small things like soap bars, screwdrivers and yarn would go missing for a few weeks and turn up somewhere completely different and out of place. The first event in December was about a month after my grandfather passed, 
so I like to think that it was him giving us signs. But every time something happens, it feels like my heart stops. Like something isn't just messing with us for fun. It's a very weird sensation. Any insight would be helpful. I smoke pot almost daily, and I've been taking prescribed antipsychotics since recently. When everything started, I was on antidepressants. I understand if you don't believe me, but I'm convinced it has nothing to do with any of this. Lately, I've been experiencing strange things related to lights. It's been happening for around a month and a half. The most recent weird event was yesterday. The events all happen at night. I haven't found a pattern or reason for them to happen. Most of the time I'm alone when something happens. It all started in July, the day I met a friend. I was helping a bartender friend of mine clean up just before closing the bar. A girl comes in right when the bartender is in the storage room. She wants tobacco, so I turn on the machine for her to buy. After finishing with the clean up, I started making a joint, but I realized I didn't have rolling paper. I went outside to ask for one and I saw the girl from before. She told me she had it at home and that she lived nearby. While we were there, we got along really well, so I told her we could smoke together in a park near her house. This park is right next to an industrial zone. I work in a company nearby. Behind where we were sitting, there's a warehouse. It's late at night, so everything is dark. Everything is lit by the lights of the warehouse, but it's still pretty dark. While we're talking, we see a creepy shadow that looks like the western depiction of death. We start whispering how creepy it is until the person is lit by the streetlight. It was just a Muslim woman wearing a hijab that made her look like that. We start laughing and I had an idea. I started using suggestions to scare my friend. I pointed to a bush that was in the dark and I said to my friend that it looked like the woman we just saw passing. I began doing things I read online that in theory attract ghosts. For example, I read online that if you whisper at night, you attract spirits. I didn't believe in anything of the sort because I had never experienced something paranormal. After this, I told her I would walk with her to her home because she was scared. We stood up and we started talking. I looked back and acted as if I saw something and told her to hurry up. After doing this a couple of times, I realized that two of the lights of the warehouse we were next to were off. They're right behind where we were sitting. I pointed out to my friend and she told me she would walk faster. As we were exiting the park, I looked back and the lights were on. On my walk back home, I saw more strange stuff. I was having trouble sleeping because it was a warm night. My bedroom door was open and I could see into the laundry room. I heard a creaking noise like the floorboard shifting, so I looked up to the doorway. I thought it was my parents coming through to use the toilet or something. However, I didn't see them walk past and it was dark with a little bit of weak street lighting outside. I kept staring at the doorway because I kind of sensed somebody there. I then heard a really deep male voice which said, Tonight, you will sleep on the edge of your grave. The voice came from the empty doorway. I was so scared and freaking out, I yelled, go away. Then there was this deep laughing that went on for about five to ten seconds. My parents had been in bed and heard me yell, go away, and came to see what was wrong. That wasn't the end of the incidents in this house. The same address, about a year or so later, it was daytime when my dad, mum and I were home. My dad was outside. I was in my bedroom and my mum was in the shower. I heard a really loud thump on the roof. I got up and walked around looking at the roof, wondering what it was. It was then I heard footsteps above me. I could hear the steps moving directly above me, so I followed underneath. With each step, it was apparent it was traveling towards the bathroom where my mum was. The roof access was also in the bathroom. As I got near the bathroom door, my mum came flying out with a towel wrapped around her, nearly knocking me over. 
She was screaming out for my dad and panicking, saying there's someone on the roof. He didn't believe her, but then I climbed in and said I'd heard it too. So we got up into the manhole and looked around but couldn't see anything. We never heard anything up there again and never had animals or anything on our roof or around the property. Whatever it was, it was very heavy. At this same address, I can't remember my age, but I was probably around eight years old. It was dark and I was in my bedroom, which faced the rear yard. I had large sliding windows with curtains on the top half of the wall. The bottom half was solid fibro. I saw a light shining on the back of the curtain. I thought it was someone outside with a torch shining on my curtain from the rear garden. It was a circular white to yellow light with well-defined edges, about 10 to 15 centimeters in diameter. It was kind of dancing around the curtain, kind of doing figure eights, some other random movements. Then all of a sudden, a second identical light appeared on the curtain and they were both dancing around each other. I was watching them for what I'd estimate about one minute. Then this is where it gets weird. The lights dropped below the window and curtain and now appeared on the solid fibro wall. I couldn't make sense of what I was seeing because I knew light couldn't travel through solid objects. I thought maybe somehow the lights were actually coming from the inside. I just couldn't figure it out. I couldn't tell if the lights were three dimensional or not. All of a sudden, they just vanished. This happened back in 2011. My first two years of college, I went to a satellite campus of a much larger school. They had three sets of dorm buildings, one being an old apartment building from the Victorian era. I lived on the third floor of said building. The dorm was like an apartment. Two bedrooms, a bathroom, kitchen and living room. In hindsight, it was pretty sweet. I shared a bathroom with my friend Ali. Ali and I kept having these very weird matching dreams. Always about someone we knew, and it was always sexual in nature. Me, her, and my other roommate Elle were all talking about it one day. Elle was super into stuff like auras and whatnot, so she suggested the dreams indicated that there was an item left behind in the room. We were like, yeah, okay, sure, but still decided to humour the idea. We search the room and find this old pillbox over the mounding of our bedroom door. We were freaked out, but who knows? Maybe someone from the year before hid it. After it happened, more shit started happening. Temperature changes, random knocks on the doors when no one was there but me. The most notable was a stack of textbooks being knocked down. I was the only one there and no windows were open. The odd part was our weird dreams stopped too. Elle ended up building a shrine around it and things seemed to chill out. At the end of the year, I placed it back where I found it. We also contacted the girls who lived there the year before, and they had no idea it was there. First off, the only history of mental illness I have is anxiety, depression, and premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Not ruling anything out, but I've never had auditory or visual hallucinations, ever. Except when I did shrews in college, but this happened way before that. So I'll cut to the chase. I was like six and had gotten into a fight with my mom. Of course, as kids sometimes do, I yelled, I hate you, down the stairs at her. She said something back and then slammed the door that was at the bottom. Instantly, I felt this weird force, like wind, but not cold or anything circling around my head. I heard so many whispers from many different voices within this odd energy circle. Instantly, I yelled stop and everything went dead silent, like too silent. I sat there for a second, absolutely bewildered. Eventually, I got up, talked to my mom and forgot about it, but it's always been in the back of my head. The only other weird thing to happen in that house was one, Every night when I'd try falling asleep, what sounded like someone violently turning in bed, like moving sheets would keep me up. And two, maybe this is something normal, but at least once a week, 
I'd see what looked like lightning inside. Picture a streak of lightning, but inside of a dark room. It was always electric blue or green. My friend and I had a really bizarre experience on a bushwalk, and we've never really been able to wrap our heads around it. I'm curious to see if anyone has any ideas about what happened to us or what we encountered. We were both pretty experienced bushwalkers. We were pretty confident we'd be fine on this trail, even though it's not the most well-marked or heavily used trail, and we'd never hiked it before. We left at 8 a.m. and told family members where we were going and that we planned to be back home by 4 p.m. at the latest. About two hours into our walk was the first sign that something was off. We couldn't get our GPS to work correctly. It was showing us as being in a completely different area to where we were. This was weird, but it wasn't a big deal since we had a map. At about 1 p.m. is when things got really strange. We had stopped to check the map. My friend said, I think we took a wrong turn back there somewhere. Then we both felt off balance for a few seconds, and then it was dark. When we checked the time, it was 5.41pm. We'd lost almost five hours of time. We also started hearing this weird, heavy breathing from one direction we'd been walking towards. It sounded like a person breathing right next to us, but we couldn't see anyone. And when we called out, there was no response. We live in Australia, so we didn't have to worry about any large predators. But you hear stories about weirdos who hang out in the bush and murder backpackers. We were both felt extremely unnerved and we just didn't feel comfortable moving towards the breathing noise. And on top of that, we agreed that we had made a wrong turn somewhere. So we turned and walked the way we came. We considered calling for help on our phone, but we decided we'd try and at least backtrack to where we'd lost our way and go home from there before calling for help. The breathing followed us as we walked. We were both feeling dizzy. We were convinced we were being followed by a serial killer and we were too scared to stop and try and call for help. Believing if we alerted whoever was walking to us, the help was on the way, it would prompt them to attack. Eventually, I was too dizzy to continue, so we stopped and called for help. We were instructed to stay where we were and wait for rescue, but the breathing sound wasn't going away. So we kept moving towards where we thought we'd left the trail whenever I was well enough to walk for a few minutes. The breathing followed. Eventually, we found a set of stairs that was marked on the map, so we were able to more accurately tell rescuers where we were. I fainted while waiting for the rescuers, and my friend tells me the breathing not only continued, but sounded like it was circling us. There were never any sounds of footsteps or any indication that there was anyone there except for the breathing. She admitted by the time the rescue arrived, she was hysterical. We were both rescued without any physical injuries. The source of the breathing, our dizziness and our lost time was never identified and it was pretty much brushed off as the product of panicked brains. Even our families didn't believe us. They thought we'd just gotten lost and been too embarrassed to call for help. Shortly after this happened, she told me she was having nightmares about the breathing sound and the dizziness and sense of unease she felt. She mentioned she didn't feel like she ever wanted to go bushwalking or camping again, and to my knowledge, she never did after that. That was pretty much the last I heard from her for over two years, until a few weeks ago when she reached out to me to catch up. We had a short chat, but we didn't mention this incident. Tragically, a week later, she took her own life. I don't know how much our experience played a part in her mental health. I know there were always many factors in suicides and it would be silly to think that I could have prevented it, but I feel really guilty that I didn't try to stay in contact with her. No one else believed her about what happened and I know that affected her a lot. So just for context, my parents divorced when I was around 10 years old. I was raised by my mother for my formative teenage years, whilst my father sold up and moved to Thailand to set up a business there and live a life of debauchery. I eventually reconnected with him a few years later, and at the age of 18, 
he invited me over to Thailand to holiday with him for a while. I dislike Thailand. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful people with some of the greenest landscapes I've ever seen. But most of the people are scammers, con artists, thieves, liars. And that's just the expat community. The locals take things to a new level. I'm not a fan of well-used ladies, and so the prostitution aspect of the country doesn't appeal to me either. In short, I very quickly lost interest in being there. My father's bars and businesses were in Phuket, but his home was in Koh Rat up in the north of the country. We spent some time in the tourist hub of Phuket and then headed north to see the house he'd built for himself. It was nice, etc., but I was bored with the trip and wanted to go home. My father then made mention of a temple not too far away, but was something special to see. A phenomenal building in the design of an elephant at Wat Ban Rai. He'd seen it several times already and wasn't interested in taking me. His paramour, Kesson, offered to do so in his steed, as she could perform her prayers there, and so off we went. The temple really is a sight to behold. It sits on an artificial island surrounded by water, but the magnitude of the building was not at all what I was expecting, and I'd encourage anyone reading to take a look on the internet of images of the site. We walked over the bridge and inside the temple, which was full of fascinating murals, it was the first time during the holiday I was genuinely enjoying myself. Eventually, I'd seen enough and made to leave, but Kesson asked if she could do her prayers before we left. Okay, no worries. There was a bench not far from the entrance, and I sat there and comfortably waited. A few moments later, a young Thai Buddhist monk came and sat next to me. He spoke broken English, and I found it quite difficult to follow his attempt at dialogue. He'd say unusual axioms, metaphors, and other sentences that I wondered at what he was trying to communicate. One of the ones I've always remembered was, The devil wears many faces. Make sure he doesn't wear yours. I wasn't being overly polite, and perhaps a little stupid, and was responding with, Don't go bowling without your shoes, or something as idiotic as that. We were managing to converse, but not really grasping one another's meaning. After a few minutes of conversation with the monk, I felt someone tap my shoulder. It was Kesson, having finished her prayers. She apologised for taking so long, to which I replied it was fine, as I'd been passing the time with, and gestured to the monk who was now gone. I asked if she'd seen the monk, to which she replied, monks are everywhere. I aqueoused that there were numerous monks at the temple, but tried to describe the young one I had just been talking with. She hadn't seen him, so... Fair enough. We left. It was actually 20 minutes that had passed that she had been inside, but I didn't think too much of it as time can be subjective if you're engaged in conversation. Nothing all that unusual there. As we got to the other end of the bridge, I turned to look back at the temple as it still remains one of the truly impressive sights of my life. However, I saw unusual shapes around the temple. They were orbs. They looked to be of a full metallic way, as th but they floated around the temple. It almost seemed like they were vibrating extremely fast. The closest parallel of what I saw would actually be from the Mass Effect series of games, the orb in the engine room. They were simply vibrating very fast and kept disappearing and reappearing from sight. It was almost like the experience of seeing stars after feeling dizzy. I rubbed my eyes to see if it had such an effect, but they were still there. I asked Kesson what they were, but she had no idea what I was talking about. All she said was, temple, with a confused look on her face. I was pointing and repeatedly asked what the hell they were, and even passers-by looked over and carried on their way like I was pointing at nothing and just being a nuisance. Eventually, I relented and left with Kesson, but not before asking her to take a picture of the temple on a camera. As we got back to the car, I asked to see the photo. There they were, except the picture had captured far more than I saw. I witnessed about a dozen with my eyes and thought that was unusual, but the picture captured three or four times that amount. Odd formations and some of slightly different sizes and all over the temple. I showed it to Kesson as proof, but she didn't want to look or know. She wouldn't look at it ever again. 
I've only shown a few people in my life. Some initially think it's balloons until you really look closely and see that they're not. Even the formation of them in the sky belies a natural behavior of balloon. Besides, I doubt Thai monks would entertain such a display anyway. I have no idea what it was. Perhaps some expression of the fourth dimension into the third, and that's only what third dimension minds can perceive. Disembodied spirits? I have no idea, but it's doubtless one of the most unusual experiences in my life. This incident happened when I was about 12 to 15 years old. I don't exactly remember perfectly. I woke up and everyone was asleep and my German shepherd was by the foot of the bed asleep. My bedroom layouts had two doors on either side. On the left was the hallway that led to my sister's room and was open. While the other on the right was the hallway that led to my dad's room and was closed. Both hallways led to the main living room. The living room had a slide wooden door that led to the kitchen and a window wall that viewed the porch in the backyard. That's the layout. Now I woke up because I heard a loud knock on my door. Nothing unusual, I thought, because my dad knocked loudly. The only thing lighting up in my room was a blue digital clock. Just enough light to see. Not enough to read or write clearly. Then I heard another knock and I said, what? Loud enough to hear me through the door. Then the knock turned into a pound, so I ignored it, thinking it was my dad waiting for me to open the door. However, that's when I realized my dad was still asleep, snoring loudly in his room. Then there was banging on the door, like a hard double fist banging rapidly. Then I heard through that door, my dad's door banging. Then my sister's, then the front door, then the slide door to the kitchen and pounding on the window wall all at the same time. I sat there petrified in fear at all the commotion. My dog was the only other living thing awake with me and we both just sat there in my room listening to it all. It was even scaring my dog who usually would bark or get up and check anything that could be a threat. This went on for about a whole minute but right when the clock struck 4am it was dead silent again. Everyone for some reason was still asleep except for my dog and I. Even thinking about it now chills my bones to the core and I have no reason to explain how this could even happen. For context, I live in an old semi-detached house in a small village in England with my parents and younger brother and three large dogs. For as long as I can remember, household items have randomly vanished and reappeared days later. Things like remotes, headphones, jewellery, etc. Once, a lighter vanished from inside a cupboard and showed up on the sofa. A dog tag fell off the collar. We assumed it was lost in the woods, so we bought a new one. Just shy of a year later, it turned up under the dog bed, but we thoroughly cleaned the house weekly, including moving and emptying the dog beds. Chalked everything up to being forgetful or clumsy. We're forever hearing footsteps and whispers, but said it was the dogs walking or leaving a radio on somewhere. Almost two weeks ago, we went on holiday. Dogs were put in kennels Tuesday afternoon. Cleaned the entire house up, dad went out and mum was at work. Brother was in the kitchen with me when we heard walking on the stairs above the kitchen and saw the wood bend slightly. I went to check that there was no one there. Nothing. Carried on. All evening, everyone could hear footsteps, but we decided it was our brains filling in the blanks for the dogs not being there. 2 or 3 a.m. came around and we all woke up for the taxi. As we were locking up, the outside light came on. It's pretty hard to turn on, because it's in two cases to avoid water damage and it's usually high up the wall. It takes quite a lot of force. But still, it turned on. We turned it off and continued checking windows, etc. My parents have a display cabinet for some glasses and a decanter they were given at their wedding. They're all pushed pretty far back for protection, but there's some pictures in there and two corks with a 20p coin in each my gran gave me and my brother for good luck when we were babies. Both fell at the same time when we were all sitting. 
Mum opened the door to pick them up. And as she walked to get a cloth to wipe a shelf, a glass came off a different shelf and shattered. As I said, these are far back to avoid this, and it was a different shelf. But then she accused me of laughing, which I wasn't. I was really startled. She said it sounded like faint laughter, as though trying to hide it. Soon enough, the taxi comes, everyone gets in. All house doors and windows locked, no electricity. Then the driver asks if my parents are leaving the eldest to look after the house. No, they have two kids and we're in the van. There was a humanish figure in the window that everyone could see. Cue everyone getting out and doing a full sweep of the house. Nothing. We don't have a basement and the attic is largely inaccessible without moving furniture in the hallway for a ladder. It could be easy to brush off his tiredness, but the driver runs a late night service while his son does daytime trips. And I work evening shifts at the minute, so it was like the middle of my day. Plenty of alarms in the house, etc., as we have an old boiler and they're all working. No gas leaks or anything. All have regular checkups at the doctors and we have unrelated conditions. We just can't explain anything and more and more keeps happening. It's just getting increasingly unsettling. To start this off, I'd like to say I don't live in a creepy house. It's old, but in a charming sort of way. Doesn't feel negative when you walk in. Feels like home. So you can imagine my absolute shock when I was laying in bed alone this morning, watching something watch me back. At 4 a.m. this morning, my husband left the room to go to the bathroom. Our room is decent sized, but from where the bed sits, you can see one of the two windows in the room. It being 4am in summer, it's a bit light to where you can see outlines and certain things. We have no animals. I laid in bed waiting for him to return so we could cuddle, when I blinked and suddenly saw movement in the dark. A dark mass in the shape of a head that had moved over the top of the covers, just enough to where I could make out the fact that it was moving. I froze because I thought it was my husband. Sometimes when he gets up, he'll sit in the chair put on their headphones and play video games to not wake me up when he can't go back to sleep. I thought maybe he just got back in and I just didn't hear the door open and that's why he was sitting in the dark looking at me. So I asked him, why are you sitting on the floor? A few seconds with my heart pounding, no answer. And then I heard the doorknob click. And as soon as my husband walked in, it ducked down and disappeared. I screamed, obviously, because what the fuck? and had him do a thorough search, but he didn't find any intruder. I still can't explain it, and I'm scared to go into my bedroom alone. Back in the days I was still a student, I rented an apartment with two other students. Our apartment contains three rooms. One room is next to mine, sharing a wall and another's door is facing my room's door. The student in the room next to mine set up his subwoofer on the ground and stick it to the wall between our rooms. So whenever they play war games on the computers, you can feel the bombings and explosions if you're inside my room. Everything seems to be good until one night, I got woken up by the loud noises of firing, bombing, and explosion from the other two rooms at 3 a.m. I was hearing my friends talking laughing and feeling the bombs and explosions. Next, I tried to cover my ears with my pillow, but it was too loud. I really couldn't go back to sleep. I rubbed my eyes, got up and walked to my door, wanting to tell them to use headphones and keep silence so I can sleep. When I turned the doorknob and started to open the door, suddenly all the loud noises were gone. I didn't stop and continued to open the door quickly knocking on the student in the opposite room's door, only to find he was asleep with the girlfriend on his bed. Whenever his girlfriend came over, she doesn't allow him to play computer games. Still, I thought he's playing a prank on me, so I asked him about the loud noises. He looked puzzled and insisted he didn't even turn on the computer at the time. One thing that's even more strange 
He reminded me that the student next to my room had gone to his parents' house for the weekend, so his room was empty and locked. He left a spare key for me just in case, so I opened his room to check. The computer was off and nobody was inside either. I thought it was probably a hallucination, although I don't think so, as I never had such an experience. After the student living in the next room was back, we told him about what I experienced. His face turned white and told me he experienced the same thing around a week before. The difference was that that night, the other students and I were both not in the room. So he just thought that he's having hallucinations of some sort and didn't tell us. The same thing happened at 3 a.m. Two weeks later, I woke up from some panic knocking on my door at 3 a.m. It was a student living in the opposite room. His face was white too, as he gathered us and told us he had just experienced the same thing. We were not clever enough back then, as after we three experienced it, we decided to set up video recordings at night, trying to find out what's going on. However, we never experienced this again and we graduated and left. We did tell other classmates about it, but none of them experienced the same thing. A few students who claimed to be able to feel ghost presences say they did feel something in our apartment when they came over, but they said so after we told them about our experiences. Five years after we graduated, we attended some alumni gatherings and finally found someone who stayed in the same apartment before. He also said he experienced something similar. We discussed possibilities, a glitch in the matrix, group hallucinations, in the end, we concluded we probably got played and unharmed pranked by some kind of ghost or spirit living there. Yet we don't think we would know the answer.